Blue Shield of California is trying a novel approach to control drug spending. It's bypassing PBMs by negotiating directly with a manufacturer of a biosimilar for Humira, a blockbuster drug that costs the insurer at least $100 million per year. Will this be a breakthrough for containing drug prices, or is it really just a gimmick? What are the implications for other drugs and for the PBMs that distribute them? Welcome to Care Talk, America's home for incisive debate about healthcare, business, and policy. I'm David Williams, president of Health Business Group. And I'm John Driscoll, senior advisor at Walgreens. Well, you know, October is known for costumes and masks, but for some of us, it feels like we're wearing a mask every day, at work, in social situations, everywhere. Therapy can help you reconnect with your truth self, so you don't have to stay hidden behind that mask. Masks should really just be for Halloween and not for concealing our emotions. Well, that's where BetterHelp can help. BetterHelp offers online therapy. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and customized fit to fit your unique needs. Now start by answering a few questions, and you'll be matched with a licensed therapist who's right for you. If you ever want to switch therapists, you can easily do so, and there's no extra cost. Now, whether you're navigating stress, anxiety, or just looking for personal growth, BetterHelp connects you with professionals who can support you on your journey to self-discovery and healing. It's time to take off the mask with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash care talk to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash care talk. David, it is the season of Halloween. So most people, most a lot of health plans think that they their deals with PBMs are kind of trick or treat. Yes, I get some sort of a deal somewhere, but I'm not quite sure whether I'm getting tricked or whether it's a treat. And I think this Blue Shield sort of throwing up their hands and negotiating directly with, you know, for biosimilars, for uh, with Mark Cuban saying the heck with PBMs is, is, is sort of an interesting sign, if not of lowering drug prices, because it's unclear that the whole Kit and Caboodle is going to be saving a ton of money, but it is sort of a, a signature moment for a health plan to throw out a PBM and in fact say, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do without them. Well, you know, Humira is a, a big cost item, exactly hard to say exactly how, how big it is, but it's a, a major- It's big, big, big. It's big, big, big. It's a major anti-inflammatory drug used for autoimmune uh, conditions. It's a, it's a biotech drug. So for a long time, they haven't faced any competition. Now there's a number of biosimilars that are on the market, and these are not directly substitutable, but you know, pretty close match for Humira. So most patients can, can take it fine, and it gives a new opportunity uh, to do something a little bit different. And it looks like what Blue Shield was doing was, was negotiating, as you're saying, directly with the manufacturer of a biosimilar, and they're trying to offer that. Now, I don't know whether you think this, John, this is just kind of a, a one-off. You, you know, you mentioned taking PBMs. Is this just like a demonstration project, or is it the start of something new you know, for Blue Shield that's significant for them? Well, I think it's two things. One is I think the CEO of Blue Shield, Paul Markovich, is very creative and entrepreneurial, uh, but in you know my conversations with him, I think the reason we're at, the reason he got here um, uh, building it builds it is a reflection of the frustration that most CEOs of companies uh, health insurers who don't have PBMs feel, and that employers feel that the the PBM industry is really a, a the, the lack of transparency means they don't know whether they're actually getting a fair deal or a raw deal. And so he decided to, he charged his team to actually go out and, and, and try to work, have a workaround uh, to uh, negotiate directly, not just, by the way, on hum Humira, which is a monstrously serious anti-inflammatory drug, which is to say it's very expensive, it's very common, and it is one of those uh, occasions when you've got a, a biological drug for which there is a... Uh, a, a stable supply chain to create a biosimilar. Just to, to remind folks, you, you know, there, there are two classes of drugs or types of drugs that people typically take. Stable chemical compounds like pills and capsules. The prices for those have dropped pretty dramatically as patents have expired and generics have taken over, though there's still some branded drugs in that category. 
Um, the real burden of increase in inflationary costs, or much of the burden, is not just in those pills and capsules, but also in the biologics, the drugs that you know typically are, are transfused. Uh, the biologics are, are, are novel. They're incredibly effective, uh, and they've been protected by patents. So what a biosimilar is, is a, is a, is a biological equivalent that creates competition in the category. So this, this I think, is a big shot across the bow, not not of necessarily of the, of the of pharma, but certainly for PBMs that health plans can just avoid the middleman and negotiate directly for a you know, pretty a pretty large drug, a pretty large meaning expensive and common drug. So, John, a lot of this, you know, kind of back and forth between the PBMs and the health plans isn't well understood, even within the industry, and maybe even by. The health plans that are doing the negotiation, there's, uh, you know, there's different uh, rebates, different formularies, different things that make it uh, much uh, more more difficult to understand. But at the end of the day, is this just kind of inside baseball, or will it make a difference for the patient? I mean, if, if Blue Shield negotiates differently, does oh, that matter? Oh, oh no, I mean, I, 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 but just to just to remind people, Blue Shield of California is a not for profit. I mean, they are very mission oriented. They are very focused on getting a better deal. For the consumers, and you know that that means that uh, the the CEO Paul Markovich and, and that management team is working very hard to to try to to lower the rate of inflation and the total cost of of, of insurance. And uh, it, increasingly, drugs are uh, a, a much higher percentage of the total cost of of uh, of healthcare, and thus are driving up costs. I mean, he, I mean, Chimera. I, I don't know whether it still is, but it was the it was the 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 biggest drug in the world uh, a few years ago. So, and there is a there is a biosimilar. There are other ways to build these biosimilars. In fact, CVS has their own biosimilar manufacturing entity that's part of Caremark. But it's uh, I thought it was pretty meaningful that the Shield, as it's often known. Threw out Caremark and its biosimilar, and just decided to go direct. I know. I think. I think this is a pretty significant move. Having said that, not a lot of other health plans followed behind him. So it'll be. This is really a yeah. major test case. Now, one of the things they are saying for the patient is that they will make it, um, you know, zero out of pocket uh, for uh, a member that's uh, that's using this. Now, maybe they do that for biosimilars in general. I don't know. Um, if it's really a big part of the portfolio, and, and Blue Shield is saying that through this plan, they may save up to $500 million, so that that can't all be on Chimera since they only spend $100 million on that. But if, if that happens, I mean, do you does it actually, is it significant enough that it translates potentially into lower premiums and actually changes the equation a little bit here overall? I, I think that's exactly what Blue Shield is looking to do, is to reduce uh, at least the rate of inflation for healthcare premiums and certainly the rate of inflation for drugs. I mean, at the end of the day, Blue Shield, like most consumers, is sort of baffled by why we put we spend more and mo more money on drugs every year, um, and particularly in on drugs where there is some competition, where there's biosimilars. But I think that 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 um, the reason why Blue Shield is trying to basically blow up. The middle, the, the 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 market for middlemen or pharmacy benefit managers is because they just did not feel they were getting a clear and fair deal. Um, this is a complicated supply chain problem they're trying to solve. It's not just about uh, Humira, the, the 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 drug. It's it's really an approach by Blue Shield to establish because I think they're going to still leverage Caremark's retail networks. They're going to encourage and and uh, provide access to Mark Cuban's uh, uh, cost plus pharmacy, and they're going to negotiate directly for Humira. So this is a you know this is going to be a complex patchwork, but the goal is to is to is to lower the rate of increase and at least get to a point where they can understand what the patient should pay, whether they actually achieve that half a billion dollar target. Just to be clear, they announced that they could you know, save half a billion dollars, but that's over many, multiple years. And without much detail, it's really unclear whether that was a real number or, 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 or sort of a, 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 an optimistic projection. Yeah. But I believe that they wouldn't have done this deal if they didn't think that next year 
Blue Shields consumers aren't going to be paying less for drugs than they would have otherwise through a Caremark or another PBM. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what the PBMs are doing, because certainly uh, this isn't the first time actually the PBMs have been bashed or, you know, people said they're going to have a transparent PBM or whatever, or even the government's gone after them in one way or another. Um, and yet uh, they've managed to thrive and do well uh, with their business models, either as independent entities or more recently as part of a part of health plans. You mentioned that Caremark, which is the biggest uh, PBM, is having its own company to make and to market biosimilars. I mean, what? How, how does that fit into the equation? It works very well for Caremark and CVS because they can effectively shift a lot of their covered members to their own biosimilar and very quickly capture the margin that otherwise the manufacturer would make. It, it really begs the question as to whether these vertically integrated enterprises, vertically meaning you, you, you're, you've got Aetna insurance, you are working with Caremark, who Aetna owns, uh, their pharmacy benefit manager, and you're often going to CVS, which is also owned by the corporate entities stores, whether they actually, they're supposed to get that, a vertical integration is supposed to make sure that the consumer gets a lower cost deal. It's unclear whether that's true. And they've certainly had a lot of interest. I mean, there's a, more recently, there's a Federal Trade Commission uh, in, 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 inquiry into PBM, uh, pharmacy benefit managers, trade practices. And it was so popular with the PBMs that Cigna just sued them to yeah. uh, because they, 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 they feel like they've been defamed. Yeah, not talking nicely about me. It's like Sarah Palin or something coming after the New York Times. Um, I, I, I guess the question, Dave, is you know you're you're in the market with looking talking to people in the, in the healthcare world. Do you, what do you think of the, the the PBM how PBM brand is doing in these days? Well, now that there are you know parts of other companies, they get I think a little bit less attention from the average uh, you know consumer, and I think people are just confused about what they're paying for drugs, and they just know that it's expensive, and they know that if they have Medicare, maybe the donut hole is closed. I don't think there's that much um, understanding of it. I think one place to look at is actually in the investor community. Uh, you were referring before to uh, you know CVS, which has a Caremark as the PBM. They've got Aetna, they've got the drugstores, um, and so on. And there's some interest, not just from the regulators, but even from the investor to say, does this actually make sense? And should there should there be a, a sort of a breakup um, you know, of that entity? Now, it may not be so easy to do, and it may not actually... Uh, produce that much, but there's at least this concern that something that may look good on paper, that it's a, a one-stop shop, may not actually you know, completely add up. I mean, it's great that the price of Humira is, is going to drop in a way, but I see that one of the things that you know, Caremark is doing and maybe others is they're actually taking Humira off of the most formularies. So if I've been using it and you say, you know, yeah, just, just to be clear that they would be taking the branded version yeah. of Humira off the off of there and they would for they would require you to use their generic probably pretty high margin <laughs> right alternative again i mean it's not i don't to know for sure if people are going to have it you know, but if someone's if someone has by definition if you're if you're taking the drug and i'm not going to pronounce it since i see we're saying it differently but if you're going to take this drug that's expensive and uh it's going to be for something that's fairly profound in your life and the idea that you're being switched to something else because that's better for something that Blue Shield is doing or PBM didn't want to do something or they're going to make money by selling it themselves. I think that by itself is is not a positive. Um, now, the drug may be the same, but it, you know it's not going to be exactly the same. Uh, it's not exactly the same as doing a, a traditional well, I mean, pill generic. Just, just, just like I, I agree with you that they being forced to to get on someone's formulary may be a challenge, but let's just put this in context. Um, Abavi, the pharmacy manufacturer of Humira, which is again created, it, it was so effective, it was the largest drug by dollar volume in the world. But the reason it got there is they raised the price more than thirty times yeah. over twenty years, and you'll notice over twenty years because it extended the patent life through a wall of phony litigation and intellectual property bal balderdash. Do you, yeah. you know how to spell that, Dave? You know what that means? That, one of this, and, that balderdash is actually phonetic. And so only in the last couple of years has the FDA figured out a way to allow biosimilars to, to, to come to earth. But this is an ex exceedingly 
overcharged expensive drug. AbbVie started char- went from charging fifty thousand dollars a year for this drug to eighty thousand dollars a year. So it was an urgent need to bring biosimilars to bear. CVS, Caremark, and others came in. So I, I do think that the the alternative competitors are actually playing a positive role. They brought down. I think the 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 the, the need the, in the year after the biosimilars came into the market. I think that uh, Humira's revenues dropped by about forty percent. But they've been overcharging patients and kind of gaming the system for years. And so it's a it's a funny balance. You've got the pharma manufacturers jacking up the price for vulnerable patients. You know, I think there's an estimates that you know that 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 that. Uh, I don't know whether it's up to 100 billion, but certainly 20 or 30 billion dollars. Medicare may have paid more because there was no competition. Yeah, of biosimilars. The biosimilar manufacturers get in here, and it may just be the perspective of Shield that Caremark might be charging a little bit too much too. Yeah. But as 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 a force for good, the biosimilars are sort of necessary. Yeah, I mean. I- the, there is an alternative, which is rather than switching people from one drug to another, uh, you could actually just regulate, uh, negotiate, or regulate the price of of Humira and um, and and not have to have that disruption. And I, I've actually proposed it's, that instead of having biosimilars. I, I I think that that's that David that that's the kind of thing that gets people outside of the People's Republic of Massachusetts accused of being socialists. I know. Note that every other country in the world negotiates. Drug pricing in the, in, of the of the of the industrialized world, and all of them have lower prices for these drugs. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, they do. So, in any case, uh, let's talk a little bit about what uh, others are doing besides um, you know, this direct negotiation and the Mark Cuban uh, drug. Uh, Mark Cuban Cost, cost Plus, plus uh, pharmacy is a great, not just example, but they're really kind of leading the way. Now, they have traditionally been uh, working with products that are available on a generic basis and not dealing with biologics, but they're moving into that area too. And, and it sounds like that they, they have a biosimilar, another one for Humira for $584 versus the $525 that Blue Shield of California says they're getting. So maybe this kind of direct negotiation isn't necessary. And Mark Cuban, who's probably got more purchasing power overall than uh, Blue Shield. You and me, for sure. Well, yeah, is going to be able to. I mean, he's a maverick, right? But uh, you know he has he he may be able to drive things. Um, effectively. I, you know, I, I'm not sure that I I I think that that may be true over time, and I'm a huge admirer of what he's trying to do because it's it's trying to create a little bit more of a rational market because um, he's still making money in his in his drug in his drug company. But I think that the 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 volume of Blue Shield Blue Shield is still the dominant player in California, one of the largest states uh, in the country. So I, I don't know that his purchasing power is up there yet, but it is. It honestly, it impressed me that it was within twenty percent of the price that the shield uh, could negotiate itself. I think the most interesting thing here there, there are three themes here that I think are interesting, Dave. One is that this is this is the first time I've seen an insurer really blow up and say we're not going to play the PBM game anymore. Yeah, that's going to be a lot more complicated, I think, than they they realize. There's a complex administration of network, um, distribution, negotiation, that the PBMs actually do pretty well. Um, there, that, that if, if Blue Shield can pick, figure out how to put together this pickup, game, pickup team of their own independent negotiations with biosimilars, cost plus, plus somebody else's network, that's going to be really, I think, an important, um, important, important point. Uh, the second is, this notion that that a biosimilars, even though you're skeptical of them, I think that they're actually the FDA would, it took its time to approve them. They've been approved and in the market much for a much longer period of time, very effectively in the European community. If people start negotiating directly, I think that's going to be another uh, thorn in the side of big pharma and, and and sort of force them to really rethink of their overcharge now to 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 try to survive later strategy in terms of drug pricing. Um, and the, the the third thing is, I think that the long term cost of sort of not, a lack of public justification for the PBMs, all of this, I think, sp- spells bad news for at least the PBMs brand. I mean, yeah. What do you think of those th- th- of those three components? 
Well, I was going to say, John, well put. You know, I think that's uh, that's right. It's not so easy to uh, to make a shift. It reminds me a little bit of uh, Comcast, you know, my cable uh, supplier, and they were charging me for a modem, monthly rental. And so I get my own modem. And so I got my own modem, which is a better modem and less expensive. And, and now instead of charging me for a modem, there's, they have another fee for those that aren't renting a modem pay a fee yeah. for that. So it's kind of like that is how I look at the- uh, Monopolies you know, are bad things. With the PBM, you, you, may, you, yeah, may do that. Yeah. There may be some other upcharges for uh, network access or something like that that uh, that may come in there. So I think their PBMs are not dead yet, but it's good to have some sort of forces, John, that if not to bring the prices down- at least to put some sort of a lid on inflation so we don't have to just keep throwing our hands in the air and saying, like, what could we possibly do about it? And I do think the drugs is a, is a good way to start. And these very expensive ones where there's biosimilars available uh, makes a lot more sense than just sort of jawboning, uh, which is yeah, like And I just before. wanted to correct one of the things I said earlier. I think it's – do you think that Medi the Medicare estimate they overpaid during the period that Humire uh, would have lost patent protection? I think it's closer to $2 billion, not $20 billion. But they – that the, the the drug was enormously expensive to consumers, but I I, I think this, this this the role of PBMs is something we're going to have to keep watching. It's, let's, it's evolving. Let's let's do it, John. So that's it for yet another episode of Care Talk. We've been talking about drug price negotiations with one very big example from a very big state. I'm David Williams, president of Health Business Group, and I'm John Driscoll, senior advisor at Walgreens. If you liked what you heard, or you didn't. Please subscribe on your favorite service.